time, 8.30. Uh, thank you all for coming. I know it's 8.30 on a Saturday morning. It's, you know, we really appreciate everybody coming here uh, to have an important dialogue and a conversation. Uh, yesterday, we talked about um, the future is a multi-ethnic, pluralistic society. And uh, by 2025, or I think it's probably a little later, there is no, no majority, uh, no, res no ethnic groups will be a majority in the United States. So that situation demands every one of us to reach out to other group, to build coalition. Um, you, we actually saw yesterday how difficult that was. Uh, it's very uncomfortable to hear different opinions. Um, we saw that yesterday. Um, I think today our panel um, is to see how can we disagree while still agreeable? How can we have civil engagement? How can we uh, listen to each other and to see maybe 10% ele uh, elements of merits in other sides of argument? If we can do that, we can build a coalition. So uh, we have six panel members today. I'm sorry uh, Hamilton Chan cannot make it today. In his place, George Wu, um, we ap appreciate George Wu to step up uh, in the last minute. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm going to pass the mic to each panel member to have a little bit of introduction about themselves. Hi, good morning. Uh, so my name is Stephen Chen. I'm the computer guy like many of the Chinese Americans here. And uh, at the spare time, I write essays about the Chinese American. I'm uh, also the editor of uh, Ren and also Meihua Ji. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Don Wang, and uh, it's my honor to be here. I'd like to thank UCA give us this opportunity and to have a good dialogue. And uh, I'm from Boston area. Uh, again, I'm also an electric engineer and uh, um, uh, act, have been actively engaged in the community and uh, in various roles. And I'm currently a vice chair of Acton. Um, American Chinese Civil Society, we have been very active, engaging a lot of local and uh, uh, civil engagement activity and also cultural enrichment activities. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming um, this Saturday morning. Uh, I actually left home uh, much earlier, too. So, <laughs> um, But I'm local. Uh, I'm uh, in Washington, D.C. area. I'm from Maryland. I'm um, the founding member of Maryland's uh, Chinese, um, uh, Chinese American Network. Uh, my name's Jen Yao Li, Li Jen Ya. Um, so I didn't adopt a Western name. Uh, this is just my Chinese name. I think that's a beautiful name uh, my parents gave me. Um, so um, I have been uh, active in the local communities. I started from PTSA, uh, you know, a mom. Uh, I'm a tennis mom. I'm a sw sw swimming team mom. Um, so that's how I got involved in the local community, started. Um, so uh, right now I'm uh, active in political field as well. Uh, I've been uh, working with a lot of lot of local um, political candidates uh, in campaigns, uh, and on the, on the other side, uh, we are promoting Chinese American core value. Uh, we are, we're promoting Chinese American involvement in the uh, local political activities. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Again, good morning. Thank you. That's much better. 
Okay, I, I would like to take this uh, opportunity to thank uh, UCA for organizing such a wonderful event. And uh, I would like to thank Polly for inviting me here. Um, and this panel really makes me think through who I am and what I have done in the past and how I got to this point. Um, and so for that, I really want to thank Polly for giving me this opportunity to be here. So my name is Jing Xu, and I'm the founder and the president of Chinese American Parent Association of Howard County. Um, we formed the CAPA in 2015, um, almost four years ago. Um, it was after a successful lobby for a school day off on the Lunar New Year Day. And we are in Howard County. So Howard County is a few among a few of the um, school district that um, in, nation, nationwide um, that has this policy in place. So since then, we have enjoyed the gr rapid growth. Uh, we have replicated the COPPA in three other counties, two in Maryland and one in um, Virginia. And right now I'm working on the fifth COPPA in Pennsylvania. So by the way, if any of you are interested in forming a similar um, parent association in your lo local school system, please please let me know. Okay, I can help out. And we, we Howard County school system is a huge school system. It has 56,000 enrolled students. Um, so outside of Kappa, I have been um, involved in community service for more than a decade. And I started from PT local PTAs um, and moved up to uh, county level. Right now, I'm, uh, uh, I served on the operating budget review committee for our school system. and the uh, County Ethics Commission. So I also view myself as a activist. Um, I have uh, advocated and, and testified for a variety of uh, local issues, uh, including sanctuary bills at the state level and, as well as the county level against the sanctuary bill. I have to say it clearly. Um, and. Uh, I, this year, I have also been involved in um, several local um, campaign, uh, political campaigns. So I'm one of the core members um, on Dr. Chao Wu's campaign team. He's running for uh, BOE, uh, BOE seat in our, in our school district. Again, we have 56,000 enrolled students, and we are covering over 220,000 voters. So it's a big campaign. Um, and I'm also, um, I also sponsored and co-sponsored several uh, fundraising events, including the recent Asian American fundraising event for Governor Hogan. Um, and he is seeking re-election um, for, for mayor and governor, and he is a Republican candidate. And uh, I have involved in other, a couple of other um, Republican candidates' campaigns as well. Thank you very much. Good morning. Uh, my name is Hua Wang. You know, I think, uh, you know, Zhenya and Jing said they're local. I'm a sort of a local. This is like coming home because I did my grad study at University of Maryland College Park. And so yesterday was great pleasure to see President Lu was here. And then after I greeted him, he left his terrapin pin with me. He said, why don't you have it? So, you know, thank everybody. And then it's a, so it's a great to be back home. So after I, you know, left Maryland and I actually went to work in the industry for a couple of years. And then I went to teach at Duke University. And then also being working in the government, like I was a program manager at the Army Research Office. And then later on, I moved to Boston, where I'm teaching over there. And uh, so that's my sort of professional track. You can, you know, sort of cover the, the industry, government, and academia. And also, I also had the uh, brief stings with, uh, you know, international engagement, uh, you know, and the, the, which is not a topic that is uh, people want to talk a lot 
lately. And uh, so on the community side, you know, so I think, you know, so I'm quite involved, uh, you know, like many of us here. So at the town level, I'm on the board of a library, the community endowment, and the uh, historical society, and the Chinese Association, and diversity task force, you know, all of that. And outside of my time in Boston, I'm on the board of, uh, you know, the most, you know, the Longest, the you know, civic organization with the longest history, and at the state level, I'm also forming the you know Massachusetts Chinese American Association Alliance. I'm the founder and the sort of leader there, and uh, I'm also running the UCMA chapter and on the board of a. Uh, you know, uh, UCA here. And then so one of the things my family joke is, you know, don't tell me which night you're going to be out. Just tell me which night you're actually going to stay home. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my name is George Wu. Um, as Paul had mentioned earlier that um, I was a last minute draftee to be part of this panel group. Um, but with that being said, I'm very, very honored. Um, I'm very happy to share about my own political thoughts and beliefs. Uh, a little bit about myself. Professionally, I am an intellectual property attorney. I am from Chicago. Um, I practiced intellectual property law for about 13 to 14 years. Uh, that's just to be helping people to get patents, trademark, and copyright. And if you are sued uh, for patent infringement, I can also help you in, in that defense. <clears throat> um, so that, that's my professional background. Um, I think in terms of my political thoughts and beliefs, probably I would say about 10 years ago, um, I, got be, I got a little involved with the Ron Paul campaign for presidency um, in uh, Missouri. So um, I started to formulate my own thoughts, uh, comparing uh, my thoughts with uh, where some of the presidential candidates. So um, over the years, I think I have evolved. and. Um, uh, but in the course of time, I, I am decidedly more on the libertarian side of things. Thank you. Thank you. Because of the limit of time, um, I'm going to ask a few questions and open it up uh, for the audience to ask questions. I don't need to speak at the microphone. Um, Oh, okay. I'm going to ask a few questions and open up uh, for the audience. Uh, you know, if you can be as succinct as possible. So, in the introduction, I talked about in the degradation of a civil discourse. This is not just the Chinese American community problem. It's a broader problem, the whole society. So, what do you think? What are the? We tend to blame the other side, right? So, it's all their fault. But what's the real cause, and especially in the social media arena, um, how can we do about it? Very briefly. Oh, okay. So most of the people here probably operating, uh, I mean, spending a lot of time on WeChat. So we do see that uh, uh, fierce fighting among the WeChat people. But uh, if you really talk to the people, right, you, you see, talk to people next to you. I really don't think there is not much difference. Now, the on WeChat or on any other... Oh, okay, 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 oh, I'm sorry. So, on the WeChat and also on a social media platform, right, so people usually have a biggest, loudest voice, they will talk. So, it uh, polarizes the opinions. So, uh, for example, right, we have a, a TOC in our city. The president actually sometimes, you know, uh, uh, opinions are very different from me. But uh, when um, his daughter and my daughter went to the same college prep school, so we sit down and we talk. Actually, very friendly. There is not much difference. So. I, I really think that the social media actually play a very big role on these issues. I think today people all have a very busy life. They don't seem to have time to really read a lot of original articles, especially the article in English. Many people consume information from a lot of uh, WeChat posts. And if you look closer, some of the WeChat uh, articles are kind of very fast they made, didn't have a lot of good base. It, sometimes they tend to use very emotionally erosing terms, mm -hmm. and it doesn't really get to the core of the issue. Sometimes just uh, pick some of the things people are really worried, 
or they, they are scared with. So people often argue emotionally, not really at the issue. I, I do agree with the previous two uh, said about social media. Uh, as, as Paul mentioned, it's not unique to Chinese American community. It's to the whole society. Um, not only WeChat, there are Facebook, uh, there are other, other social media. I think uh, you, you probably notice a lot of people uh, hide their identity in the WeChat or, or any social media. So they don't really want you to know who they really are. So they, they feel they have the freedom of say anything. So I, I think that's, that's a, a symptom of the whole society. Uh, again, um, I, and I agree uh, with, with Don about, you know, uh, now we're in the, in the uh, era of digest. So nobody really have time to read the big articles, to really to read the history. Um, how many people really read a book during a year? I think a, a, a lot of us have not really picked up a book for a long time. But what do you do? Um, you just read the article, read you know some digest. Um, you know, I, I think to my kid, I, I also do that. You know, ask them to to read book at least. You know, every every week, uh, they should pick up a book. But I think right now, uh, people are f so um, in in Chinese, it's really fu zao. So so it's it's really hard for anybody to sit down and really think. Um, again, I think it's the whole society's problem. I agree. I agree with uh, all of you said, um, but I would like to dig further, deep, deeper. I think what makes people do whatever they are doing now and say uh, their hurtful words on WeChat, on social media, um, is because people have emotions, fears, anxiety, anger, and they need a place to vent out. Um, and as community leaders, it's not up to us to say, hey, this feeling is wrong. It's up to us to build a platform that everybody feels comfortable to speak up and everybody feels respected um, and their voice gets heard. So there are three types of people based on my observations on WeChat. One is, as I said, the people who want to find a place to, to vent out. Second is they want to prove to others they're smarter than everybody else. So they have ego. Okay, They want to win every single argument. And three are those people who are really seeking um, intellectual exchange. They want to listen out what others have to say. So there's nothing wrong with any category, okay? It's up to us to provide them a channel to talk out. Um, and I think that's our responsibility. Thank you. Yeah, so WeChat is interesting, right? I think now there's even terms coined about called WeChat community. Uh, there may be then there's a WeChat bubble, and there could be eventually many of the behavior described as WeChat bully. And, but in any case, it's part of our life. And like I agree with Jing and the many of people here, and then we really need to be engaging and then you know, try to do the right things, you, you know, no matter what platform is. But often I like to actually thinking you know, as an academic person, we often think about why behind it. You know, to me, I think, uh, yes, I agree, it's how the, you know, people failing. And I sort of point, you know, come down to two things, I think, you know, maybe explain some of the things in our community even broadly. So I think uh, one is uh, this uh, sense of insecurity, you know, in a, in a fast-changing globalization world, you know. And then I think uh, the other one, you know, to me, is my brand of, po you know, politics is I think uh, there's a lack of empathy. Thank you. I think the um, the reason why there's so much discord in the political discussion these days is um, it's kind of like your belief formulates your identity. Um, many people ident identify themselves according to what they believe, and to a certain degree that is true. Uh, so therefore, if someone disagrees with your belief, 
you would take it personally because you would feel that it's not only a rejection of your, of your belief, they feel it is a rejection of, your, of you. So many people take it personally. Um, true, to a certain degree, it, that belief does formulate your identity, but I think there are more important I, uh, identity, humanity, the fact that we're Chinese, we're all Americans, there are stronger uh, threads of uh, identity that should be supersedes um, some of the political divisions, political differences that we have. So um, I think the, the, the resolution is that uh, because belief does form identity, uh, but there are other identities that, that supersedes these beliefs, do not take things personally when, when people disagree. Do not feel that it is necessarily a rejection of you as a person. It's just that they disagree with um, a certain position that you're taking regarding a certain issue. There's nothing wrong having different opinions and mm -hmm. uh, to express it. Mm -hmm. But is there any rules? Should we have any rules in the way we express ourselves? You can't just bend it out uh, regardless um, uh, what's the consequence. So mm -hmm. do you believe, do you think we should have some ground rules in terms of engagement? Mm -hmm. And if you think so, what do you think? Um, for the WeChat, WeChat group I own, or Qunzhu, I, I have, um, um, yeah, <laughs> I have some rules to set up for the people. Um, one is you cannot use uncivil words, okay? And two, try not to guess other people's intention. That is very, very hurtful. And many times it's wrong. Your guess is wrong. Maybe it's, it's not the way you, you think. Um, and try to separate opinions from facts and stay on the facts. Um, and you have to understand when to stop, when to walk away. Um, and basically... First, first of all, we have to separate the facts from the opinions. I think that that's the first step, okay? And I don't think people on WeChat have the time to dig into the facts, do the whole research. And that is fine. We just have to live with it. Work with it and live with it. And stay cool. Do we need to confront those who are spreading uh, rumors and uh, unverified stories and uh, just to, to reinforce their misconception and bend mm -hmm. out to their, their anger. That's, that should be something that needs to be stopped. I usually don't in my, in my group, okay? Because I trust people have good judgment. Each individual has to be responsible for what they said on the platform, on WeChat, because this is a public arena. Everybody is watching. And I always tell people that, you know, it's not, it's not to win over the argument. It's how you express your opinions to the silent majority. The silent majority is watching. So be mind what you say and take personal responsibility on what you say. Uh, I agree most of uh, what Jing just said, and uh, clearly we have to set a ground rule, we have to be respectful uh, when we have any meaningful dialogue. I think the challenge I have to say, have seen is, what is the fact, like Paul just raised. I remember I often challenge people and uh, to provide the evidence, because when people are sending articles, when people say a very blanket statement, and it can be pretty misleading. And uh, so at one point, I was kind of asking the fact checkers, send a link. But the challenge with this, what to believe, right? And uh, 
in today's environment and with current uh, administration, and uh, he has discredited all the media and called them fake news. And uh, so what to believe? I personally think, and uh, in American, uh, the freedom of speech, the power of media, is the core of our democracy. It provides the, the very best uh, check and balance uh, to provide the, the, the credibility and the best source we can possibly have. I know everybody has personal experience, opinions, and try to not have that crawl, crawl your mind. I think the important thing is we have to read, read a lot of good articles. I think there's a lot of good ones there. Uh, if you don't believe CNN, that's okay. You can read Wall Street Journal. You can read a uh, uh, lot of conservative, um, like even listen to Fox News. But if you read two or three of them from both sides, I think it helps you to have a more balanced view. So uh, I actually yeah, saw those issues, right? So pe people do, uh, you know, put uh, fake, I mean, uh, un unverified information on the WeChat. But uh, as freedom of speech, it's very difficult to, you know, to do much about that, right? So I uh, help uh, credible uh, microblogs like um, uh, ChineseAmerican.com. Uh, and uh, so we're trying to put a good article out, uh, you know, on the WeChat so that uh, people will eventually, I really believe that uh, people eventually will know that, uh, you know, which uh, microblogs actually give out the good information. And also when I write my articles, I'll be very careful, you know, and uh, I mean, many people here probably read some of my article uh, essays. So, okay, thank you. So I hope you, uh, you like it, and uh, so thank you very much. All right, uh, I'm gonna go to George, um, because you mentioned a very important part is um, about the identity, or I would say people form tribes. You know, they, once they have the opinion, they're in that tribe. If you challenge them, you challenge their identity, their, their tribe. So. Um, you also mentioned we have to have something that can supersede this. That's very important. That's, some, that's what will unite us. So, you know, the, uh, we, often time, uh, we often talk about we, can, we should disagree, we should respect each other's uh, opinion. But do you think, you know, we may descend into the other extreme, which is moral equivalency. Every opinion is equally right, right? So what are, the, um, what are the things that we can agree on? Um, or what's the commonality uh, between the left and right? What are the common core that forms the common identity of Americans, not just the tribalistic identity? Um, th thank you, Paul. Um, some of the common core, I think we're all part of the, uh, the citizen, citizens of the world. We're all part of humanity. So, so there's some basic identity that, um, that flow through all of us. Uh, many of us here are also Chinese. We're also Americans. So th again, these are some of the core commonalities and identity that I think that supersedes whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, whether you're a liberal or a conservative. Um, so there's some base identity that is uh, so fundamental that it supersedes some of the uh, differences. I think lastly, I think um, um, I actually pull up the uh, Declaration of Independence. Um, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they're endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I think we can all agree that we're all here on this planet to pursue happiness, we value life and liberty. So these are um, common values, um, common strength, uh, the fact that we're all human, we're all Chinese, we're Chinese Americans. Uh, these are stronger identity that just supersedes um, uh, differences of opinion regarding any particular issues. Okay, so... 
You know, I think, you know, so one of the things that really coming all these years in community engagement, but I think you can see that across the panel here, right? One thing definitely is in common. Everybody deeply care about the community and everybody do participate. So I do see this as, you know, the civic, you know, participation, political engagement. You know, this panel sort of embody that. And that is something that we're here to participate, be, you know, active in the society. So giving back to society. So that's what we do. But I still like to coming back, you know, if there's one, you know, phrase that, uh, one thing that after this I like to get across is I really become a deeply, deeply appreciating of this empathy. You know, I think uh, this empathy, you know, also build on what George says about humanity. This, this is really getting us to understanding cross, you know, spectrum and understanding things from other views. And I agree with many of the things, things here. For example, I often say that we really should not question the intent and motive of others. So if anything, you should question your own often. You know, think about it and be self so searching aspect. And so, yeah, so that's how, you know, where it's, I think, I think, and then as the Chinese Americans, right? I mean, there's a, I think a Paul underlying the question there is also thinking what's the common things among us two, right? And then, yes, we value education. And then I think the things about the many of the things, you know, the issue being discussed here is, you know, including the identity. You know, one of the things it is, right? So, I mean, you know, many people yeah, from the day before Chris Lu and, uh, George, you know, Larry, you know, Gary Locke, uh, you know, all these uh, statements they've been saying is, uh, you know, we look who we are. And so that basically means in this society, we're going to be, you know, facing some, you know, situations. And so in that, there's always this implicit bias and all these other things. So stereotyping. So I have a long way to go as us, you know, to really build a community and be the participant. And then think hopefully in the process of that, and things will be all coming to what I, again, emphasizing about having the empathy crossing the board. So I always told people the opposite side of right is not left, and vice versa is true. The opposite side of us are the people who are not engaged in politics and in community. So think of that. That's our common ground. Thank you. Um, so, so I want to talk a little bit about the moral equivalency. Um, so um, I have the opinion, I, I don't think we need to label any opinion, uh, a, give it a moral level. I think, you know, uh, as Jane said, if the intention, at least, um, if everybody has the good intention, which may not, may not be true all the time. However, if you label it at the moral level, so my opinion is gonna, is high, morally is higher than yours, then people will get into the fight of, you know, how, you know, the, the, the moral, you know, morally. So, so I, I don't think that's healthy. I think, you know, again, uh, we see everybody is equal as long as your intention, as long as you believe that you have your good intention as um, um, what, what <laughs> Hua, Hua said. Um, so, so, you know, if, if everybody in the society can, can be that, you know, I coming from a good intention, I don't think we really need to measure um, every opinion uh, in the moral level. Right. So, so there is still freedom of speech. I mean, you can, you can still, you, 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 you have your own opinion, but you still respect other people's opinion, no matter how evil you think it is. So, I, I, I think that's that's. Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Right. So, so you don't, you, a lot of times you really don't know where people are coming from and giving a label and giving a moral level, it may be wrong a lot of times. So, right, right. So, so, um, 
Um, I, I do want to also want to say about uh, common and, and uh, difference. So, so we know that so Chinese American is not there. I, I want to say there is no such thing as a Chinese American community because we are part of American. So there is not, you know, you, you, hold on, hold on. So, so I, I think that's a typical example of people not listen first. So, so you have to listen to others first, and then you have your turn to talk. I. I <laughs> <laughs> you, you will if you. You can you can take me as an example. Yesterday, two times I played. Okay, the first time is an African American uh, woman. If she would have done it on the last last part first, because she insulted the uh, the the audience, now I would accept it. Okay, the second. Figure was putting up on the on the screen was totally incorrect. Somebody right. helped. Thank you. Let's All right. So um, I I I'm sorry I can't finish. Um, but um, I, I don't know, Paul, if I still have time. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. So so um, my point is we are part of American. So so we we. Anything happened in among us is not isolate. It's not anything isolated. So you have to look the whole American, and everything has its reason. It's, it's not what I'm trying to say is we have a lot of issues that we're trying to solve, but we need to look at bigger picture. So, so I want to say our. So, so let's uh, again use the, the terminology of Chinese community. We have a huge spectrum of opinions, of view, from the far left to the far right. So we have to respect that. We can't really say Chinese community is leaning towards where? Leaning towards left or leaning towards right? It's not, because we are part of a, grand, a, a greater community, and, and we need to ex respect everybody where you are in the greater community. That's my, my point. Thank you. I'd like to actually support her a little bit on the freedom of speech side, and even on the KKK and um, white superiorist. I'm strongly against it. I think all Chinese, all immigrants should be totally against it because it is definitely against the foundation of this country, and our constitution. However, the speech of the white superiors is allowed in this country for for that principle, right? Even in Boston, there was a march by the white superiors. Look at what happened here. They were there only for 10, 15 minutes. There were like 20 of them at most. There were thousands, 10,000s of people there who protested. So I believe the goodness of human natures. I believe the good will win over the bad. So, but the principle is we still sh should allow them to talk. I think people still should have a, Freedom to speech. I think those don't con yeah, don't don't contradict each other. I wanted to say that, and I also want to echo what uh, Hua just said. I think empathy, be compassionate, is a value and very important to to every citizens. I think for that reason, I think uh, um, we should all help with the disadvantaged people because we have been there as a poor student when we come to this country. We have benefited in many ways, people who helped us. Today, there's a lot of people who need our help, including undocumented immigrants, right? We should create an environment which is welcoming and which is uh, helping them and, uh, and build a very diverse, strong country. That's my belief. That makes me a progressive people. Thank you very much. Uh, Stephen, let's move on to the next question I'm going to ask you. Um, you know, compromise is very important in democracy because you can't have your way all the time, right? You have to uh, give up a little bit and uh, get something back in the future. So, but there is a phenomenon 
uh, not only in our community, is that you have to fight every single issue. Um, you know, every single issue, if you take on that side, I'm going to take the opposite side of you because I just want to be against you. <laughs> Do you think are there principal issues that we have to take a stand, but there are other issues we can compromise? If they are, um, just pertaining to our Chinese American community, those issues, we are very interesting. What are those issues we have to take a stand? What are those issues you think we sh can just compromise? Okay, uh, Paul, are you talking about, uh, so for example, like affirmative actions? Like, uh, yes, the, 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 uh, all the issues <laughs> we've been talking about. <laughs> okay, <Right>. okay. <laughs> so, yeah. so probably we'll have argument again on, on these issues. Okay, <laughs> so let me get uh, uh, very hard on affirmative action. Maybe I even can touch on the data disaggregation, okay? So uh, the affirmative action actually is a really hot topic and we saw yesterday in our Chinese community. And I actually believe that because there was a misunderstanding of the uh, uh, policies and the cause of that problem. So let me read something, okay? So it's a quote, it's the original called Executive Order uh, 11246, right? Signed by President uh, uh, Lyndon Johnson. Okay, it said, okay, uh, so this one actually is really ref referred to as affirmative action at later on. and. Uh, so it said, okay, it pro, uh, pro <laughs> okay, it uh, ban forbidden the federal contracts and the federally uh, assisted construction contractors and the subcontractors. So for example, okay, so they can, uh, okay, hold on just a second, okay. So uh, in employment decisions on the basis of race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. So basically, affirmative action really means you cannot discriminate based on those issues, okay? So I do not know why Chinese American right now is against that. So by principle, this should be good for every minorities. Now, there are practice maybe not right, so we can argue that actually the practice, right? But uh, in the fundamental, I as a Chinese American, so as a racial minorities, I definitely have to support affirmative action. So, so now, but uh, what is the common between us, uh, left, right, right? So I'm definitely against any discrimination against Chinese American against uh, Asian American or against any minorities. So that is the common ground, okay? So, so now go to very specific on the college admissions. So if Harvard, right, said, oh, you're a Chinese student, right? I will minus five points from your application. That's deadly wrong. I will jump up and down to fight against that. Now, if that's true, right? But if Harvard said, okay, they said, okay, this person from, uh, I mean, have the African -Amer American uh, background or Chinese American, uh, American background, and they did things on their community, now I think that is a, a good thing for my college. So they consider that pushing the race in their direction and they admit some of the people based on that, I think it's okay. okay. I don't think it is discrimination uh, against the Chinese American. So, so I think, you know, uh, yeah, okay. Okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah. so, okay. Maybe let's move on to the other issue. Sure. I want to ask Jean, why we Chinese, the first generation immigrants, we want to take the lead Okay, um, first of all, I would like to share some of my um, experience and how um, I got to this point. So, 
as many of you in this room, I grew up in communist China.、Um, so Chinese people suffered and lived under poverty for over three decades,、um, up to until the late seventies,、um, that the government decided to adopt the idea of capitalism. Uh, since then, chi- China changed rapidly.、Uh, in the late late seventies, I was still a young child, not trying to re- re- release my reveal my my age, but <laughs> I I was a young child in late seventies. However, this experience shaped my political views in a very prov- profound way. So that includes. I don't believe that government should serve as a equalizer of our society. I'm not saying I believe in the law, the law of the jungle. Okay,、um, I I totally agree that we have obligations to help with the vulnerables and people in need. However, the government. Shouldn't abuse its power to redistribute wealth and to decide who are the privileged and who are the people、um, who are the disadvantaged group, and label people that way.、Um, so that's the principle.、Um, I really hold on to it. So central bill. Is another issue. In my county, which is Howard County,、um, Democrats to Republicans ratio is two to one. I don't see people here are、um, deporting illegal immigrants, or the policemen stop the、um, people to ask your immigrant status. It just didn't happen. And the central bill was introduced to our county for a very political reason. Dr. Kevin Ball was seeking re-election.、Uh, I'm sorry, Dr. Kevin Ball is seeking election, and he is against a very well-known、uh, Republican candidate who is incumbent, and he is very respectable in our county. Kevin Ball is almost name unknown. Although he has been in county council for t- almost twelve years now, but the county council nobody pays attention to county council at all. So he used this as an op- opportunity to get his name、um, out to our co- our community, and I think it's just wrong. It's he used this this bill divide our community, and it is not right. Our community doesn't have issues. And we have policies in place that the policemen shouldn't ask the immigrant status of the individual they they stopped, and he creates a problem to solve, and this is just not right. Okay. okay. So can, can I? Yeah. So. Well, I think、uh, you know one of the things we earlier agreed on this. We said we really should not try to question, you know, the motives or intentions of others, right? And I think in, so. In that sense,、uh, you know, I was.、Uh, Jim mentioned this. I'm hoping you know. Even I think every politician they get something up. You know, we still should give them the benefit doubt. They have very good intention to do this. Okay. So, but th- I I want to get one point across before you know. I think、uh, Paul takes away the mic.、Um, you know. So American is a land of immigrant, and la- American is also because it's also land of opportunity. I'm so grateful. I came here right with less than one hundred dollars in my pocket, and now I'm really truly. Being grateful, I'm living in American dream, and that's I, you know, I think it's a, you know, this, I, so great. This country adopt me, and then this is where I'm, and I, so my doing well, and my kids are doing well. I think,、uh, you know, Xin, you know, Lao Da, you're there, right? So I read that. So when my daughter was named the presidential scholar last year, I just feel like, wow, you know, what, you know, this is really the we are blessed, you know, and so forth. But 
you know, taking back, you know, thinking back. You know, it's according to academic research. This is not just what we think, right? So people often ask the question, the Asian Americans, or we as the Chinese Americans, our status, everything has improved a lot over a couple of decades. And where is that coming from? And we always value ourselves, even pride ourselves in being, say, we value education and we work hard, our work ethic. So we tend to attribute these things, the progress we made, and this, the improvement to this, uh, you know, our own, you know, work ethic or education, this and that, right? But what happens is actually the study shows clearly all this improvement is really due to the advance of civil rights movement, okay? So what happened is 60 years ago, we still, we value education. Our kids get good education, even first generation coming here, you know, they do laundry, they open restaurant, their kids get good education. But they're not getting the same improvement status. And uh, so we work hard 60 years ago, 100 years ago, right? Even during the Chinese Exclusion Act, we work hard. And, but, but now it's very different. It's all because this is academic research. This is not just say, you know, you're using data, big data, you exclude all the other factors alone. Just basically say, you know, the, the big atmosphere has improved due to civil rights movement. So in Chinese, we say, sui zhang chuan gao. So you many times when I'm discussing our community issues with our Jewish friends and with our Indian friends, and that's where they basically said, you know, the value is if you're helping the others and giving back to the society, you're helping yourself. And so as a community, that's what we like to do. So that's why coming back down to one, you know, empathy. Oh, um, I'll just say that um, uh, regarding your questions that I think America is a great country. And the reason it's great is because we have a system in place where if there's disagreements and conflicts, we can work through it through the, uh, through the rules of law. So um, I am a... F <laughs> yeah, I'm a firm believer in the rules of law. And that's why, America, we don't have a... a <laughs> that, that's that's cry. Yes, I, I do back law. Well, U.S. is a, uh, for the sense of birth of this nation, we really did not have any revolution. It's a peaceful development. And it has been, um, there's been tumultuous, well, we had the Civil War, I think. Um, but there has been tumultuous issues. But the full, for the most part, America is a very superior system because we can settle disagreements through the political process. So um, I don't believe in revolution or anarchy. I feel that if there are disagreements regarding sanctuary status, uh, illegal immigrations, undocumented workers, I think the people of this country should work together to f uh, promulgate laws and systems so that uh, everyone is law abiding. So I am against illegal status. I'm against breaking the law. Uh, with that being said, I don't believe that we shouldn't show compassion. So if there's a desire for compassion to be shown to um, uh, 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 immigrants, uh, non-status immigrants, I think that we should work through the political system, the legal system, to uh, formulate laws and system to help these people. So um, again, the U.S. is a very superior system, a wonderful system, because we have a system where we can disagree, formulate laws, formulate policies that, 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 uh, that shows compassion, that meets the um, um, the vision of the, uh, the American people. Uh, but with that being said, I, I am against where people f uh, go against law purposely. I think they should work within the system. We have not, um, the American citizens have not reached a point where we have to uh, brandish uh, revolutionary uh, guns to, uh, to, yeah. Thank you. I think uh, a lot of people growing up to China and uh, kind of not completely kind of uh, used to the, the, the democratic system here. It's a learning process, at least for myself, too. Many people took the words from, um, fr you know, the, the Donald Trump's uh, executive order, like, uh, it's always right, or it's 
give a, assume it's right, right? And in the two incidents like, we're fighting for, and the one is uh, concerned with sanctuary city because he placed like, executive orders and, uh, and uh, asked the ICE work with local police. And this actually eventually to be voted to be a no. And uh, it's actually uh, voted down eventually. And uh, that's stir, say big picture things, a lot of anti-immigration sentiment causing a lot of fear to our communities. I think the sanctuary city come out as a result of that. So when we have a town meeting had twice, and many of the immigrants show up, many of the local residents show up, and they all against, uh, they all support sanctuary town, but only Chinese people stood up so against it. I think we look really, really bad. And uh, uh, <laughs> uh, a lot of people didn't understand, ask us why we are <laughs> we're here, we're not supporting it. I think we are, have to see this thing from a big picture of things and uh, to see, and I think we have to consider and uh, um, everything we're doing here and, and uh, um, at, like George said, we actually all follow the law. I don't think half undocumented immigrants here, there are many reasons why they're here. I think there are system who need to deal with illegal immigrants, but on the local level, on the town level, we should not create an environment which make all immigrants feel unwelcome. I think that's Thank the key message. That, that's very clear that we have, we have different opinions on that, but I'm going to open it up for questions. I'm going to give the <laughs> the elders, the first chance. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, yeah. But please, please be brief. Don't make comments. Ask questions. <laughs> Thanks for your comments. We understood you, okay? <laughs> you made your point. <laughs> <laughs> Don't assume. <laughs> there are many bookies here. <laughs> Get your get to your point. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, okay. She, yeah. All right. Um, oh, we get, we get you. <laughs> Thank you. We. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we got, we got what you're saying. You know, we, yeah, we have to consider the. Right. Sure. 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 Mm. Maybe Tony. What's your? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay. But we are all here and we have a goal which I can achieve some common goal. Right, right. 
Thank you very much. Yeah, that's a great question. Actually, that's the question I didn't ask. There's only one minute. Okay. <laughs> okay. Very quick. Okay. Yes. Yeah, okay. So, so yesterday I met uh, talking to a person right from left and right. Our number one goal actually is to provide the best education for our children. Now, it is definitely the the common goal. Now, probably we have different approaches. But the uh, best education for our children is one of the most very important things. Okay. okay. Uh, what's your yes, I think I agree with everybody. Education is at the core of Chinese values. But uh, there is a different view to look at what is the good education, right? It's going to the college. You know, we all like to go to the best college in the world, right? But where that guarantee your bright future, we will make you the most... Uh, make your life uh, most uh, you, uh, very good, fulfilling life. We are make you the best, c c good citizen and in your community. There are a lot to think about how we can raise the kids who can really be resilient and uh, contributing to the society. Um, I, I, I agree. I think, you know, principle, we, um, there are a lot of principles that uh, is actually common not only to Chinese American, but to, to human society as a whole that we agree on, but how to approach it, how, how to get there. I think that's why we're different. That's why we, we are, you know, you label us from left to right, because we don't agree with how to go, how to f go from here to the goal, but I do believe there are a lot of common principles in the human society. Um, after I, I got invited to this panel, I thought it over, and I witnessed many fights over the we WeChat, uh, almost on every single issue. Um, so we have to admit that, and we are very different, and we have diverse of thought, and that is great. So respect that and live with that, that's okay. But think how we can work things out. Um, based on my experience, we should work on local issues and work on small things that we can agree on. For example, Lunar New Year, day off. Nobody, nobody objected that. How about a nonpartisan forum? We can co-sponsor events like that. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, so yeah, and, and at UCA invited me to be one of the panelists and this UCA is generally viewed as a left um, organization. Okay, so I came, I accepted the invitation and I challenge all of you to go to Boston for the CAA conference in October. And that's CAA, a lot of people view that as a right organization, okay? So you guys think you are in the middle. CAA think they are in the middle and you are left, okay? So I challenge you to go there and to listen out, to be an active listener. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Get us a ticket, yeah. thank you. I need to go fundraising myself as well. <laughs> I'm poor. <laughs> okay, so I think uh, I might, so I think the, you know, um, yes, there's something common. I mean, I still mentioned we all very caring and then we participate. And, but I think for our community, I always try to think about a little bit like this way, right? We mentioned, I think what for, we need to think about long term. You know, self-interest are justified, but we want to really achieve them and view them in the long term. You know, no skin deep, you know, uh, short term. That's number. Then the other thing, we need allies. We need build allies. You know, we are 1.4% of the population, okay? So we need to have allies. We need to build alliances. This is why we reaching out to other communities. We reaching out from the suburb to the Chinatown, all of that, not across, because we just need, you know, a line. And then last thing I think is that the common thing I think we have is hope for the future. This is what, you know, my daughter, whatever, you know, she gave a whatever speech at the one of, a, you know, the gatherings. And the last one she said, you know, you know, hope for the future. I hope you all parents encourage you of that instead of diminishing that, right? And so for us and then for our entire community, I said there's hope for the future. And that's where it's going to be getting us, you know, where we want to go. 
thank you. Um, I guess I'd just like to leave everyone with the, uh, it may sound like platitude, but um, uh, I, I try to live my life like this, that uh, you treat everyone as you like, as you like, you yourself like to be treated. Uh, I think that's a, um, that's a philosophy that, I sh that we should take in all political debates. Treat others respectfully as you would like to be treated. Um, again, as I said, the U.S. is a wonderful system. We have a system in place where people can exchange ideas, debate, uh, maybe de debate very fervently, um, but we can uh, engage each other in a peaceful, respectful manner. We're all Americans. Uh, many of us are Chinese here. We're all Chinese Americans. I think we can respect each other, treat each other as you would like to be treated, the golden rule, and help to work together to build a better country for ourselves and for all the other citizens. I think that's a commonality that we all share. Today, only when we have a civil dialogue like we have it today. And let's give another round of applause to all the panel members. Oh. I'm sorry, we have to oh, Thank you. you know, we have many, many questions um, because of the time constraint. Let's continue the conversation uh, in a more casual way uh, when you uh, meet each other. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Hey, you're hot.